In this video, I'm going to show you how to graph the basic sine and cosine functions. So let's say that we start with a point P, and we'll say that it's here on the x-axis. And then P rotates counterclockwise around the circle. Now let's say that it comes about here, and we're going to say that there's an angle here, theta. So as theta increases because p is changing, the x and y will also change over the particular t interval. Now this will cause a change in sine theta, cos theta, and also tan theta. Now the sine and cosine functions are periodic functions. So is tan actually. But in this video we're going to concentrate on sine theta and cos theta because they're related and you'll see how they are related. Now the values of these functions repeat over a specific period. So this gives us something called a periodic function, which is a function that repeats itself over regular intervals of its domain. So that means that the period or the shape of the graph is always repeated. Now a sine graph is a graph of the function y equals sine theta. Now you can also describe a sine graph as a sinusoidal curve. So this is the name that's given to a curve that fluctuates back and forth like a sine graph. So the curve oscillates repeatedly up and down from a center line. Now the sine function, which is y equals sine theta, relates the measure of the angle theta in standard position to the y coordinate of the point P. All right, so let's start again. So let's say that we have this point here. Okay, and this is at zero degrees. So I'm going to say that theta is zero, and then we can see that the height of this graph is also zero. So the y value is zero. Now I'm going to insert certain points here. So at pi over two, which we know is right here, Now, if we're using a unit circle, we know that, since this is the y value, this height here, because it's a unit circle, this will be a height of 1. And then we're going to go to pi, which is right here. And then at pi, the height of the y value is now 0. And then we're going to go down to here, which is 3 pi over 2. Now, using the unit circle and the y value, looking at the y value, we can see that the y value is now negative 1. And then when we go back to where we started, which is 2 pi, we can see that the height again is back to 0. Now, I've laid this out really nicely so that the circle will actually match this graph here, which is y and x. So, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to lay out our angle, actually let me change this, instead of x we're going to say this is theta, <clears throat> and so at 0 we can see that our y value is 0. So that would be this point right here. Now I want to lay this out so that we have these angles on our theta axis. So I'm going to say that every two lines is actually pi over 2. So this is pi over 2, and this will be pi, and this will be 3 pi over 2 and then this will be 2 pi. All right, so at 0, we have 0. At pi over 2, oops, sorry, I'm going to call this 1, and then we're going to call this to be negative 1. All right, so you can see that this matches up very well. So 0, it's 0. At pi over 2, if I draw my line across, this will have a height of 1. At pi, if I draw this across, this will have a height of 0, which is what it says over here. At 3 pi over 2, if I draw this across, notice that I am crossing at negative 1. So this 3 pi over 2 will give me negative 1. At 2 pi, which I'm back where I started, will give me 0, which is right over here. So if I connect these points, 
I get a curve. Now it's not a straight zigzag up and down, but it actually is a very nice curve. So I'm gonna actually add two more points. So one of the angles I'm gonna add is this one here. And I know that at this point, this is a 45 degree angle, or we can say it's pi over four. So since this is pi over two here, this line here must be pi over four. So if I follow this along, this will be pi over four, and then the height will be whatever that will be according to this y value here. And that's gonna be the same on this side here. So if you can draw the best 45 degree angle, you can. Let me try that again. Oops, this one's gone. <clears throat> so this will be now three pi over four. And pi over three pi over four, this should have the same height because it's 45 degrees. So at three pi over four, which we know is right over here, so this is pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, that should give me the same height over here. So now that I have those points, I can actually, you know what, let's add two more. So we're gonna draw this one here and this one here. So this point here is gonna be five pi over four, and over here we'll have seven pi over four. So at these two points, if I draw them across onto my graph, so this will be five pi over four here, and this will be seven pi over four. Notice it's actually not perfectly zigzag. So if I actually drew a line here, let's use a red color, you'll notice that this is what it would look like. And notice it would actually miss those two points that I have here. So it's actually not zigzag. And that's why we're gonna draw this with a nice curve that goes down, uh, sorry, it goes up and down, and then it's gonna come back down and then go here. So notice the curve is a curve and not a zigzag that you would think it might be. Now, this is periodic, which means that it keeps repeating. So if I go backwards at negative pi over two here, I should have it coming down. And then at negative pi, I should go back to zero. So this graph and these points should have occur here as well at negative pi over four and negative three pi over four so that I get a nice curve. And this actually keeps going on and on. And this is our sine curve. So I'm going to label this as y equals sine theta. Okay, so we're going to take a look at cosine as well. So cosine is actually very similar. Okay, so I'm not going to draw the circle this time, but this time at zero. Actually, let me take a step back first. So if we recall our triangle, if we have our theta here, Remember that this is our x, this is our y, and this is our hypotenuse. We'll call it our radius. So remember that this is theta here, sorry, and then we have cos theta is x over r. So when we talk about cos theta, x over r, we're actually looking at the x value. So that's why actually I should go back. When we're looking at sine theta, and I'm looking at my triangle, theta is equal to y over r. And so sine theta is equal to y over r. And that's why we were only looking at the y values of this circle. So I'm going to come back down. So when we are looking at cos theta, we actually want to look at the x values. So instead of me drawing the whole circle again, I'm going to use the circle that we drew above. So when I take a look at the angle zero, we are taking a look at the x value. And the x value or the x distance from here to here is actually one. So at zero, we get one. At pi over two, the x value at pi over two is going to be zero. At pi, the x value is now negative one. Three pi over two, we can see that has an x value of zero. And then when we go back to 2 pi, we go back to an x value of 1. So when we graph the cosine curve, it's actually very similar. You'll see what I mean. So we're going to still use 
every two lines is going to be pi over 2. And we're going to go backwards as well. And we'll make our y values every 1. So at 0, we get 1. At pi over 2, we get 0. At pi, we have negative 1. <coughs> Excuse me. 3 pi over 2, we get 0. And then at 2 pi, we go back to 1. Now, knowing that it rotates around the circle is actually going to be very similar to the sine curve. It is not going to be a zigzag, but it's going to be a curve. So we're going to connect these points here in a nice curve, which looks like this. Now, if we keep going to the left in the negatives, we will actually get the graph to look like this. And you can see that this looks very similar to the sine curve, but it's actually shifted over. And it's actually shifted over by pi over 2 to the left compared to the sine graph. So we can actually say that the cosine curve is also a sinusoidal function. Now the coordinates of point P repeat after point P travels completely around the unit circle which is the circumference of 2 pi. So therefore, the smallest distance that p travels before the values for y equals sine theta and cos theta repeat is 2 pi. So this distance is called the period of sine theta and cos theta. Now the amplitude is the maximum vertical distance above and below the horizontal central axis. So that line, if I go back, is this line here. So this red line that I'm drawing straight across. So the amplitude is the distance from this red line, where it is kind of the central line, the central axis, to our maximum point. So this would be a distance of 1. And from here, you can see it's also a distance of 1. And it should be. So the cosine graph, we see that this also is a distance of 1. And over here, when we look at the minimum value here, this is also a distance of 1. So, the summary of these features, we can say that the sine theta and cos theta, they both have a domain of all real numbers. The range is from negative 1 to 1. And that's the same for both of them. The maximum is 1 for both, and the minimum is negative 1. That's our lowest, our highest and lowest value. The amplitude is 1, meaning it's the distance from the central axis. And the period is how long it takes to repeat itself. So if we take a look at the sine graph, we go through one cycle, starting from 0 to 2 pi, and then this will repeat again. So that means that the period is 2 pi, and that occurs the same for cosine. It can start 0 at the top here, come down, go to the top, and then it will repeat again. And that takes a distance of 2 pi. Now the y-intercept is what changes. So looking at the sine graph, the y-intercept is 0. Looking at the cosine graph, the y-intercept is 1. Now the theta intercept, there's a lot of them. So I'm just going to list some of them. And this will be negative pi, and then 0, pi, 2 pi, and so on. So we can see that it occurs at every pi. So we can say that it occurs at every n pi. Similarly, for cosine, the theta intercepts are negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. Now, what we say is we start at pi over 2, and then we're going to add a pi each time to get every subsequent theta intercept. Okay. 